So in the previous videos we watched, we noticed that one was a drain back system, and then through the middle video, middle portion of this video, you saw that it was a open 200 gallon steel storage tank that was uninsulated. And for our solar thermal install, we're going to do a closed pressurized storage tank. And the brand that we happen to use is Stiebel Eltron, and this is directly from their website, and we can see what the image looks like. And they've got a nice little cutaway picture down below that we're going to scroll down right here. They're using a steel tubed with a ceramic based paint over the steel line. There's a sacrificial anode and you can see that they're using a foam insulation on this tank. It's a pressurized tank so let's take a look and see what it looks like from the operation side of this system. Now why would we want to use a pressurized tank versus an open tank? Well the pressurized tank is actually quite a bit more efficient because we can keep the operation operating temperature just a touch higher under pressurized system and we also can use the domestic hot water that comes in be stored in the tank and then force that water up through. Now that'll come at a cost. There may be some additional piping and some other concerns we have to worry about and that's where the, we're getting permission from the local uh, authority having jurisdiction will tell us whether this is an acceptable or unacceptable an install. So uh, let's go now and look at the manual here. So here's our manual for the Stiebel Eltron. The system that we've got is the 300 liter system. Let's go down to a couple images that'll help us make heads or tails of this. So let's take a look first of all at some of the problems that happen here. Now one of the nice things that I have with the open storage tank is I don't run into the calcification problems as much as the pressurized system. So if you live in a city or a municipality that has extremely high calcium deposits you're going to see a decrease over time of performance that will eventually cause a problem and on this pressurized tank we'll need to open it up clean it out and go forward whereas on that open tank that I have I also have a clean out trap I can remove that water but the water itself that's in the tank stays there so the fluid that stores that energy that heat energy from the Sun is going to stay stationary in that open tank system in the closed tank system that fluid is going to move through the tank on its way so if I look at just this pressurized tank from Stiebel Eltron there's a few criteria and again, this is a refresh from what we've got. Our solar thermal fluid comes in on the high side, and then the exchange out or the going back up to the collector will be on that. The hot side that is going out to my system for the boiler will come out here, and then return line will come into here. That'll give us the most idealized bang for the buck of the transfer of energy from the collector and then out to the systems that we have there. So that's the system. Being a pressurized system, we're going to have to have a temperature and pressure gauge on the very top. So if we scroll all the way down to the bottom of this manual, you'll see just a typical pressure and temperature relief valve. It's a standard pressure, single stage, a spring loaded system, and it's got an operating temperature of 210 with a 150 p. PSI. So most municipal water supplies will provide you with 50 PSI of working pressure where that fluid can flow through. So let's just take a look and we're going to do a couple things here. Let's just take a look at the actual system and I'm going to do a right click turn clockwise and this is the system that you might have seen from that Stiebel Eltran Sol 27 kit and that lab manual there. So here's what happens and you've we've talked about this. The solar thermal system is going to come into here. Here's my shut off valve here it comes in and it heats up here. Now what's interesting is the domestic water supply that's providing the inlet water comes in and flows through the tank up through the top and out this way. So at this point this water is starting to get hotter and then eventually this water is actually the hot water that goes out. This system has the ability to give us really two main points of heating and the heat delivery. The first is the solar collector comes through here and then the domestic hot water goes through here and then in just the next slide we're going to see a heat exchanger here for say the radiant heat. Now a couple things that to, to worry about in tank sizing and tank design and so forth. 
when we design fluids to flow, we always want to have ourselves ball valves predominantly in these systems because ball valves, A, last longer. They have less inlet restrictions on them, so that will decrease the amount of pressure drops associated with each insertable item in it. And then the other fact is it gives me bypasses. So just a quick exclusion from the tank, but looking at how fluid flows. Here the cold water comes in. I can turn this valve off right there, and I could force that domestic water supply to go this way and into eventually a storage tank. So I could have a secondary storage tank that if this water got too cold, I could then have just a typical domestic hot water tank, a typical vertical tank right there that would provide heat. Or when this is on, I can open that valve right there. The cold water comes in, cold water flows into this pressurized system, comes out obviously hot through that mixing valve, and I'm providing hot water out to the system. So there's two mechanisms. I could avoid the domestic hot water tank on the right hand side and just keep with this thing. In this particular case I could not. I would have to have a secondary coil internal to it to continually provide heat into this storage tank. But one problem that we need to worry about is the domestic water supply, the DWS, that is flowing here needs a double line, two linings of protection from the, the glycol mix. And unfortunately this system only has one coil here. This may not be a satisfactory means of thermal transfer. You have to check with your municipality to verify that that is an acceptable practice to have the tank itself store the liquid for the domestic water supply and out. So that's just something to worry about when you do your initial site setup and know what the municipality is. So the tank itself, that's the tank going on there. Again, we've got three collectors in this particular example and ours will only have two. As we go down to this system now, it's still the same. Now we've got a boiler system right here and now I have a secondary pipe system that I can run hot water through the boiler to do radiation heat systems. If your municipality requires a double lined application, you can then take off of here and run that to your domestic water supply. You can avoid all of that. We'll get into that as we do our installs and we'll look at it, but that is something to be on the lookout for as well. So a couple things. Every closed pressurized tank system will have to have a sacrificial anode. The best anode that you could use is a magnesium insertable rod or aluminum. That would be your next best. So on the sacrificial anode, when you look inside of it, you'll see that if it's white, it's okay. As that wears out, you'll start to see that inner connection start to turn red on you. And that's time to replace that. Let me go back up here and talk about a few other things that we have to have in common with this. Now, we have to have a pressurized tank up here, and then we also want a pressure regulator on here to maintain this pressure inside of the system. Now what's nice about this is Stiebel Eltran has verified that their system will work upwards of 150 PSI, so that's about three times the operating pressure that the municipal water supply will provide you with. So typically we like to see somewhere near 50 to 60 PSI of pressure that's on our water system. And so we can overcome that by three times. That's not the pressure that we're setting our solar collectors and lines and the solar collector pump at so that system will be at something entirely different this pressure here typically will be in that 30 psi range roughly you could go somewhat higher and there's some numbers that we'll calculate there but on the tank and the tank sizing that's what we have going on you can kind of see how this tank takes the hot water and exchanges it here it takes this to the boiler or potentially the domestic hot water if it needs to be double lined if you're allowed to use the single line version you can take that water right off the there. So there's a couple things that you need to know about. And again, these are minor details, but one thing that you need to know is what is the, the amount of surface area that we have for heat exchanging? Not as critical, but we also need to know what the height and the dimensions are of this product. And the reason for it is, where are you going to store this tank at? The nice thing about this tank is that it's insulated. It's got a three inch insulation around it. Unlike that open vent where you're gonna have to then provide your own type of insulation around it, this has got it built in. So most typical installs will have this sitting next to the domestic hot water tank, and that'll give us a, a means of giving us a nice clean look going to and from the tank to this storage tank. And that's what we have here with this 300 gallon system. And that will do it for us.